Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Slicing 3D models with the included settings from the manufacturer usually works pretty well and gives you decent results. But what if you want to change some settings to improve your prints or get a special effect? Today I'm going to show you some advanced options that will allow you to change up your prints. If you're new to 3D printing, you maybe want to check out my video about beginner slicer settings first. But if you already have some experience, the slicer that I'm using for this video is Cura 3.0.3, as in my opinion at the moment this is the best slicer that you can get for free. Especially in Cura 3, they added a lot of features for tinkerers like me, like you can define your own 3D printer in there, instead of just using the Ultimaker ones. So let's jump over into Cura. Now, when you start off the program for the first time, you probably won't see the screen just like this, as many of the more advanced options are hidden first. So what you want to do is go to Preferences, Configure Cura, which will open a panel, and on the left in the navigation you can navigate to Settings, and then put in the tick mark for Show All Options. This will show all the different settings that you can change, and this might be a little bit overwhelming at first, but in this video I'm going to explain some of the more important ones to you. Also, if you move your mouse over the settings, a little window pops up that explains you very briefly what the setting is all about and how you should change it. And if you change something that you want to change back, you can always click that little circle arrow thingy and that will revert the setting to the standard for that profile. But let's not waste any more time and get right into it. If you want to change the top appearance of your print, this is the setting for you. Normally it's just lines which creates a whole bunch of diagonal lines all across the top of the print. Similar to that, ZigZag does diagonal lines, but instead of ending the lines and creating a new line, it just makes one snake, which improves the print speed a little bit. And if you look very, very closely, it doesn't look quite as clean, but by eye you don't see it. What looks very different, however, is concentric where instead of making a whole bunch of parallel lines, it creates a spiral that just spirals inward. And this can look really cool if that's the kind of look you're going for, but if that's not what you want and your shape is rather complex, it might look distracting. So use that one with caution, but if used properly, it can give a really cool look to the top of your print. It used to be where there were only two options for infill, either a rectangular pattern or a honeycomb pattern. But nowadays there's a plethora of different options and knowing when to use which one can be a really good tool. Now, there are two basic different kinds of infill. There's the traditional where you just have a single shape and then it's just the same thing every layer. And then if you look in, it's, you can see all the way through to the top. And then there are the more modern 3D infill that provide a little bit more strength. They have like 3D objects inside that are like made up for, so that they create the info. To find out which one is the best for you, you just have to like play around with it a little bit and get to know them. But one that I want to just show you real quick is concentric. And it's not tr like a traditional infill, it doesn't really support the structure. But it could be used as a kind of cool effect, as it just creates the same thing smaller and smaller and smaller within each other. And if you separate them from each other, you, you get a whole bunch of shapes within each other that are the same, just like these uh, Russian dolls. Obviously this doesn't make it strong, but it's a kind of cool effect. More strong ones are like 3D cubic and stuff like that. This one can come in really handy if you have a problem where the hot end drags over your print and creates an ugly streak in the top layer. As if you enable the hop, it always lifts up the hot end when it moves to a different spot. This of course also adds some print time as it has to go up and down every time. On Delta printer the print time added is not as much as on traditional printers but it still is there. When you have a model that needs support material, the way that the slicer decides where to put the support material is by the angle of the plane. And by changing the support overhang angle, you tell the printer at which angle to start adding support. With an angle of 1, that would mean that you get pretty much support everywhere, whereas an angle of 90 degrees would mean that you only get support if the 
object is completely horizontal. There are also a couple more settings in the support panel, but this one is the most important one. This setting is only going to change something if you're printing more than one object at once. If you have the print sequence set to print all at once, it's going to pr print all your different objects all at once, which on the positive side means that you can have them really close together, but it also can result in some more stringing, and if your print fails halfway through, all the objects are gone. If you set it to one after the other though, it means that it prints one object and then the next one and then the next one. You have to make sure though that they are far enough spaced apart so that the hot end doesn't hit the other object of the platform. This then allows you though to have a more clean print as it doesn't have to switch in between the ones and if after the third model your print fails, the first three models still are good and you can use them. This mode will take your model and just print it as a single thin shell. It does that by just making a spiral and just going up and up. It never retracts and goes to a different place. This means though that not all models are compatible with this mode. Uh, if you have a rather flat top side, it's not going to print very well, well, as it just makes a thin spiral contour. You can see that very well with this ball, where the top part just isn't there as the print failed there. But on the side it creates a very smooth surface as it doesn't have to leave the print anywhere. This one might sound like a gimmick at first, but it's actually really useful. Instead of printing a really smooth surface, it makes a rough texture and that allows you to get a really uniform look, you don't see any print imperfections and it also creates a really grippy part. So if you have any parts that you want to like grip onto and you don't feel like modeling the rough texture in the modeling program, you can just enable Fuzzy Skin and this will create it for you. So I hope you guys learned something from this video and can now go out in the world and create better 3D prints. And if you have any settings that you think I should have mentioned but I didn't, leave them down in the comments. And you can, while you're down there, also don't forget to hit that like button and consider to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I also have social media and affiliate links down in the description where you can support me without costing you anything. Thanks for watching and until next time.